Pleasant Valley Community Design Workshop for tonight. Um, so for anyone who is interested or knows someone who is interested in listening to this meeting in Spanish, please feel free to click the interpretation button at the bottom of the screen and select Spanish. I will now take a moment to offer a brief welcome along with these same instructions in Spanish. Buenas noches. Gracias por estar con nosotros en el taller comunitario acerca de la intersección en las calles Pleasant Valley y East Riverside. Si está participando en español, es posible que actualmente ya esté escuchando la interpretación en vivo. Si no es así y desea escuchar a la reunión en español, solo hay que buscar el botón interpretación en la parte inferior de la pantalla. Oprime el botón y seleccione la opción de español. Más adelante en el programa, tendremos la oportunidad de aportar comentarios en vivo. Si desea participar en español, las intérpretes estarán para apoyarle. Quedamos a su orden. Y con su permiso, continuaremos con la reunión en inglés con interpretación al español. Thank you. Let's transition to our slideshow for tonight. Um, so tonight, let's see, let's go to the agenda slide. So next slide. Tonight, we'll begin with a brief um, overview of Project Connect and the Blue Line, and then we'll discuss what we have studied and what we are proposing for a multimodal intersection um, and station at East Riverside at Pleasant Valley. Uh, we will have Q&A SWB audio captured, not we'll registered. Team of people who are working behind the scenes to answer those questions as, as quickly and as accurately as possible. Um, and we're also going to open up the um, Mentimeter, which is a polling application where you're going to be able to participate live and you're going to be able to see what other people think live. We'll close by talking about next steps. And our aim is to have you back to your evening plans by 7 p.m. Slide, please. So please allow me to a moment to emphasize the following. Our outreach and engagement with the community has been intentionally inclusive. We want to hear from all voices in the community. If you spot a person, maybe a friend or a neighbor that you can encourage to participate for the first time tonight, please encourage those new voices to be heard in this space. This is a safe space where every idea deserves to be considered and every question deserves to be answered. That said, we will try to get to all of your questions tonight. But if we can't, know that we will use the issues that you have raised to inform top topics for future meetings. Next slide, please. If this is your working group, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first experience in a meeting with us and you'd like to be more intimately involved with details on a particular area within the blue or the orange lines, it's not too late to join a working group. If this sounds interesting to you, please visit projectconnect.com slash get involved to find out more. So let's begin with introductions. Slide, please. I'll ask my colleagues to please turn on their cameras and wave as I call your name. I'll begin with my colleague and co-host for tonight. Mr. Giannis Banks is the Austin Transit Partnership Public Involvement Manager for Metro Rapid and the SWB Green SWB audio Giannis. capture, not registered. Next up, we have Peter Mullen. He's the Austin Transit Partnership's Chief of Architecture and Urban Design. Good evening, Peter. Next up and new to our team is Paolo Faria, Austin Transit Partnership's Senior Director for Architecture and Urban Design. Welcome, Paolo. And last but certainly not least, we have Lisa Storer, Manager of Sustainable De Design for the Austin Transit Partnership. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Jocelyn. Yes, sir. Before we go any further, can we introduce uh, Council Member Kitchen? She's here in the audience tonight. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Can't no see problem. all of our attendees. Council Member, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Um, I am. Um, I don't see my camera, I'd turn it on, but um, so um, welcome everybody. I'm excited about uh, hearing about this, this part of the, um, you know, project. Did we lose her? Oh, there you are. 
Yes. Okay. And we have video now. All right. Yes, exactly. So I just wanted to say welcome to everybody. I'm very excited about hearing this um, presentation tonight. Um, as with all parts of Project Connect, this is a really important part of the, what Project Connect will offer to the community. And um, as um, you know, as Jocelyn said earlier, this is uh, it's so important to hear from everyone. So I encourage you all to, um, you know, to encourage everyone you know to get involved um, and let us know what you think. And so thank you for having me and I appreciate being here. Thank you, Council Member Kitchen. And thanks, Yanis, for pointing her out. Um, so next slide, please. SWB so audio captured, not registered. Connect in the blue line. Uh, for that, I'd like to invite my colleague Peter Mullen to walk us through the next section of this presentation. Peter? Great. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thanks to everybody for being here tonight. Um, yeah, so Project Connect, um, which is the, the transit system expansion that we as a community voted uh, to support in November of 2020. Um, it's, you know, it's important to recognize that this is a program of many projects. Um, the, there are lots of components to it. Obviously the two new light rail lines, the orange and the blue line, um, but there are you know, other aspects, including upgrades to the, the existing red line, um, a new commuter line and the green line, four new Metro rapid lines, expansion of local service and Metro Express, um, and also the $300 million anti-displacement investments um, to make sure that we are um, leaving nobody uh, behind as part of this process and making sure that this is as inclusive um, an investment as we possibly can make it. Um, and it's just important to recognize that this is a system and all these different parts of the system really need to work together. Um, I think you'll find that uh, tonight's discussion about the um, the Pleasant Valley East Riverside Station, which is a major intersection of, of two of the elements of Project Connect, um, sort of puts that to the test and hopefully we'll, we'll get your feedback on that. Uh, next. So where are we in the process? Um, we are in the, for the orange and blue lines, we are in the, the preliminary engineering phase. Um, and so that's also, sometimes we call that the the NEPA process, the National Environmental uh, Protection Act environmental review process. And so we're in the middle of that. Um, you know, we, we, got, we um, completed 15% design last summer. Um, and SWB audio capture, not registered. The, the design reviews at that time. Um, since then, we've been looking at, we've been de developing the design, looking at specific areas, including the, the subject of tonight's meeting um, at Pleasant Valley Riverside. Um, and so we're approaching this coming summer, summer of 2022, um, the 30% design and the release of the draft environmental impact statement. And, and what that means is that kind of really defines the, I would say the, the footprint and the parameters of the program and of each of these two, these two aspects of the program, the blue and the orange line. Um, so that will be coming out later this summer. And so Right now we're in this really critical period where we're looking at um, the design in some more detail to make sure that we've got all the pieces of the program in the right place. And so tonight's program is really about a part of that. Um, in the fall, we'll be working towards, you know, we'll be getting community input on the on the 30% design and the DEIS. And we'll be working towards um, basically making some decisions, re reaching some consensus and alignment around some key decisions. Um, and then uh, finalizing the EIS and going for a record of decision from the FTA in the first quarter of the beginning of, of 2023. Um, I will say that this is a federally regulated process. The FTA is a really important partner of ours. They're gonna be a major funding partner um, in the program. And so all of these steps are gonna do this very um, codified regulatory process. Um, and, and an important process. Okay, next. Um, I did want to say a couple of things about cost because uh, you know, certainly as we, as we complete the 30% design and we look at how um, the co updated cost estimates for the program and for these two projects uh, uh, based on that 30% design. SWB um, audio capture, not um, registered. And so 
um, we always have to we have to look at the choices through the lens of cost to make sure that we're making the best use of resources that we that we have available to us. Um, you know, I will say that, and this is probably not going to be a surprise to most people in the room, based on what's uh, happening in in the world. You know, costs are going up, and, and particularly in Austin, where um, we have this very hot economy and an overheated real estate market. Um, you know, the costs are, we're probably feeling increased costs more than anybody. So, or as much as anybody. So, um, you know, we are seeing that and we're going to have to manage those additional costs as we make decisions about how to move forward with the program. Um, those cost increases really come in the form of three major categories, you know, real estate costs and, and, and the need for um, real estate acquisition costs that, that we have as a, in order to be able to, to um, make the, the, the light rail projects you know, work in the city and also to achieve all of the, the back of curb improvements, whether it's sidewalks or bike lanes, et cetera, um, that we want to implement as part of the program. Um, certainly inflation is, is a big driver um, and you know, that's globally, but certainly we're no, we're no, we're not, we're no exception to that here in Austin. Um, and then program scope changes, some of which have come through technical additional technical review and and uh, and analysis, um, you know I think many of you have heard that you know the the subway extents have increased in part because of some technical requirements and so there are costs associated with that which are not insignificant. Um, but there's also we're we're always we're taking a lot of feedback from the community and reflecting that in the design and some of those decisions may result in additional costs. So. Just want to say that up front because I think it's it's there's been news of that um, in the press and it is something that we're looking at very intentionally and I think SWP audio capture as we not registered decisions about design. Um, one thing to point out is that at this time we do not uh, anticipate uh, additional taxes. You know we our job as in order to cover those additional costs, um, we we know that the the voters gave us a charge and and provided a revenue stream to be able to implement that charge. And that's our job is to figure out how to make that work. So um, we are not an, a, anticipating a tax increase to cover this at this time. So no, no change, no, no impact to the voters um, in terms of funding. So um, the other thing is I think we will be looking at project phasing as a way to manage some of these costs, um, you know, so that we, you know, figure out how we may build this over a longer period of time so that the, the program as a whole um, so that we can match our, our revenue to our expenses. Um, okay, next. Uh, so this is the site um, that we're looking at today. So this is the intersection of Pleasant Valley, which you can see kind of running vertically through the middle of the slide, north, south, and Riverside Boulevard, which runs east-west and is running horizontally through the slide. And you can see here the Riverside actually divides into uh, the east and westbound lanes divide and we have this very large median in the middle um, where the the station will be located um, that both serves both the blue line um, which is uh, at the light rail blue line as well as the the metro rapid line on the pleasant valley line uh, which intersects a perpendicular you see a little key map on the bottom left that shows that there are also a number of really um, important local fixed routes um, um, as part of Cap Metro's uh, bus network, and so we have to accommodate those as well, and, and make sure that all those uh, those connections can be made seamlessly. Next, so I'm going to pass it to Yadis, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, Metro Rapid, and then I'll be back to talk more about the the station design. All right, yeah. SWP audio capture not registered. I know everybody's excited about Metro Rapid, right? Uh, and so the Pleasant Valley Metro Rapid will run from Mueller uh, down to South Austin to Goodnight Ranch. Some of the, the highlights uh, of it, of course, is Mueller, uh, ACC Eastview, uh, the access to Lady Bird Lake. We know there's been uh, interest about how people get to maybe what a new boathouse is going to be or just how to get access to the lake. You can get that now with this Metro Rapid. Uh, we will talk about the Riverside connection there at Pleasant Valley. Uh, where it will meet up with the blue line. We'll also be able to get you to Dove Springs, uh, Easton Park, and of course, Goodnight Ranch, where there will be uh, a park and ride built out uh, there. So uh, next slide, please. 
Now, one of the exciting parts about Project or about Metro Rapid is that you do have this 10 minute peak service. Uh, if you're not familiar with our, our Metro Rapid system, that's what's working on with the 801 and 803. Uh, there will we are working with the city to do some transit signal priority treatments. Uh, those are things that can help the buses uh, get out in traffic a, a little faster, a little better to help with uh, its timing. And the thing I think a lot of people are excited about is that all, all of the vehicles, all the buses for Metro Rapid, they will be electric, uh, clean, quiet, zero emissions. Uh, uh, I know you've already seen us start to implant um, some electric vehicles in our fleet already. And, We've already made an order, so we'll have the electric buses here for uh, Metro Rapid when we turn the, the signal on. So, uh, next slide, please. Now, if you're looking at this picture, you may be thinking this looks a little different than the current Metro Rapid stops uh, that you see throughout the city. And you're right. Uh, we've heard from community feedback of, about those shelters, about those stops, and having a better design. Uh, we work with the community on what this could look like. And this SWB is what audio we call uh, capture, not be registered. Stations, there'll be modular, modular stations, I should say. Uh, and they'll have a large size and a neighborhood size. Uh, that is something that we've heard from the community that they wanted to have a smaller footprint uh, in the neighborhood. So we'll be able to scale it down a little bit in size uh, to fit with the neighborhood. Uh, there will be cameras at these stations for added security. Uh, as you've been seeing at a lot of our stops around the city, we will have our dynamic messaging screens or DMSs. Uh, those those big screens, digital screens you've seen at our stops that will let you know when the next bus is arriving in real time. Uh, there will be near level boarding. This will help with uh, you know ex expediting people getting on and off the bus so we can have a faster moving service. We will have solar panels uh, whenever possible and there will be potential for public art and community information panels. Uh, if you look at those screen panels, if you're familiar with our Norwood stop, we have some public art from the community uh, that was put onto those panels and there'll be an opportunity uh, at these stops as well to do that or once again, some information about the community. So we're excited to work with the community about that. Uh, next slide, please. And now I will pass it to Jocelyn, uh, who's gonna talk about uh, the blue line alignment. Uh, thanks for that, Giannis. There's a lot of exciting updates in the area. Um, so again, so here we have um, the alignment where it extends east um, from at the Pleasant Valley and Riverside intersection, which is the one that's highlighted in that red circle. Um, but just as a reminder, the blue line is going to be running um, from the airport um, all the way Sorry, I'm just getting some, the stream is not working correctly. Oh. You Can sound everyone? great. SWB no, audio good. capture, not yeah, registered. we can see you and hear you. Oh, okay. Maybe it depends on the user. Okay. My, my apologies, it is Facebook and we just wanted to make it known on Facebook that we are still continuing to work that glitch out, but they can hear you and transcription is being done on Facebook. So our all our online users, thank you for our patience and we will continue to work on that, that you can see what we are seeing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that clarification, Joanne. Um, yeah, for those of us who are tuning in um, through social media, um, technical difficulties, um, but we'll we'll be with you. Um, so again, if we look at this alignment and this little map of what the blue line is, we have um, the stations beginning, I guess let's go from right to left um, at the Austin Bergstrom International Airport, and then um, traveling along, crossing the um, intersection where we're talking about East Side and Pleasant Valley, East Riverside and Pleasant Valley, and then going up to uh, across across the lake over to Republic Square. Um, that is usually the alignment that we talk about, but I want you to notice the little blue line that continues north. And that just means that the blue line and the orange line north of Republic Square are going to continue all the way up to North Lamar at 183. Um, and so along the, uh, along the line, we have um, dedicated transit way, which means that we're going to be, the, the train is going to be on the street. Yes, it's sharing the street with cars, bicycles, and pedestrians, but it is in its own, uh, on its own rail and its own lane. 
Um, and then it's going to be running along portions of what is currently Metro Bus Route 20. And we have these 10 planned stations, which we are looking forward to in this portion of the alignment, which we're looking forward to um, collaborating with the community on what those stations could look like. Slide, please. SWB audio so capture not registered. The, um, the intersection, and this is a, a much more um, vibrant live picture of the intersection that we're discussing tonight. Um, and that median, which is on that rather large hill that's there. Um, so now that we've oriented ourselves to this area, we'd like to hear from you. And so now is the time we've been talking about. We're looking for our live audience participation by Mentimeter. Um, and, and one of our first questions is going to ask, what is your relationship to the East Riverside Pleasant Valley proposed station area? And um, Giannis, I see you're on the line. Could you, yes. could you tell our audience how they can participate in our, in our Mentimeter poll? Yeah, if you're here on Zoom or if you're in social media, uh, and hopefully you can see us again on Facebook, but even if not, that's fine. Uh, you can go to menti.com. And then you will enter in three, six, four, six, six, seven, nine, six. Again, uh, that's go to menti.com and then enter the code three, six, four, six, six, seven, nine, six. And, you know, we'll give you some time to get there and get logged in before we get to the first question. But uh, I know you want to say it for our people who may need the Spanish translation as well. Yes, for those of you who are tuning in um, through our social media, um, you may not have access to the live interpretation, and so I'll go ahead and repeat these instructions in Spanish. Um, para participar en, en nuestra encuesta para la comunidad, les invitamos a, a visitar el www.mentimentilatina.com y agregan el código 3646. 6796. De nuevo es menti.com. SWB audio capture not registered. 6796. Y vemos que ya están participando mucha gente. Ya de, de las personas que nos están acompañando esta noche, tenemos a 28 personas que están, nos están acompañando. Y les invitamos a que usen este código QR para participar con nosotros. So what I'm saying, Yanis, is I see that of the people who are participating tonight, we have already 30 people who are signed in um, to participate live. And it's a really fun portion of our program where you can see um, what fellow audience members think of the of, of what we're presenting here tonight. Oh, yeah, definitely. We, we definitely want your particip participation in this. Uh, and so we can get your feedback and see what you're thinking and what you would like to see. So, yeah, go to menti.com and enter that code. And as soon as we get a good number of people there, we will go ahead and get this started. Uh, but, you know, this is the time for you can say what you want to say uh, until we get to the Q question and answer part of, of the program. So, yeah, head over to Menti and let's get this thing going. Let's see. I want to see if we can actually hold until we have 40 participants. We only need five more. Come on, y'all. I feel like this is a one of those QBC. telethons. Yeah. <laughs> QVC. That's right. We need five more people to, to head on over. Five more people. Uh, We've got 54 people in the in the um, webinar here. And so if we could just get to 40. There we go. 37. Aquí tenemos 37 participantes. A ver si tres más nos pueden acompañar para que tengamos 40. Come on, even if you're thinking about it, just point your phone at that QR yeah. code. Don't think, just do it. You know you want we're to. We're not asking for money. We're asking for opinions. <laughs> you know you want to. One more. One more be person. That hero. Who's going to be the person? The doors are open. Come on down. I know you're thinking about it. Let's go ahead. There we go. Hey, hey. SWB right. audio capture right, not 42. registered. Let's keep going. Above All and right. beyond. Let's get the party started. Let's do it. Okay, so this first question is, how often do you go to the East Riverside Pleasant Valley area? Esta yeah. primer pregunta, queremos saber... Um, ¿Con qué frecuencia están en la zona de East Riverside con Pleasant Valley? Eh, ¿Todos los días? 
algunas veces por semana, algunas veces por mes, algunas veces por año o nunca, nunca han estado en esta zona. Yeah, this is just helping us get a feel of how often you, once again, you go to that place um, where we will know we want to make this a destination place, but as well as somewhere you're going to be comfortable and just want to get the feel of how often the folks on this call are, are heading that way. Yeah, maybe they do their grocery shopping in the area um, at that HEB. What else is over there? There's some fast food restaurants in the area. Maybe you stop in with your kids at that McDonald's or Burger King or... Yeah, there's some good Mexican food rest restaurants over there as well. So um, that's close in the area. So you could be in that area for whatever reason, and it doesn't matter how often or how few times you go. Uh, your thoughts and your opinions about this, it matters, uh, you know, just the same. All right. Looks like we got some answers for that, and it's kind of stopped. So it uh, looks like a lot of people on here is every day, and there's a tie between a few times a month and a few times a year. So we have some people who are familiar with the area. I think we can go on with the next slide. This is great. Yeah. We have a lot of people who are local. This is, yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, this is great. Um, so how do you usually get to the East Riverside and Pleasant Valley area? Um, so we want to know if you're walking, biking, busing, taking a car or other. Uh, SWB audio capture not registered. ¿Cómo es que usualmente llegan a esta zona de East Riverside y Pleasant Valley? Caminan o vienen en bicicleta, autobús, coche o algún otro método que llegan. Yeah, a lot of car users. Hopefully we'll be able to, to change uh, that over these next few years and get them uh, get some more people on the bus, whether it's Metro Rapid, and then a few years after that, it will be on the light rail. Uh, but we definitely That's see great. a lot of folks who are car dependent um, heading over to that this, area. In this area, you pretty much, sometimes you have to be car dependent on this area. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just easier or in this Texas heat right now. Yeah. Um, but hopefully now with, with the changes that are coming to this intersection, we want to provide other people, we want to provide everyone options. We're not shaming the car users, right? We're not at all. Just providing options. Yeah, not at all. We definitely want to, um, we do want to see that number go down a little bit. That's just working with the city and, and their goal of having, um, you know, different modes of people getting around. And so we want to get you on the bus, give you a reason to ride the bus or ride the light rail uh, when you can get to bed places just as fast or in, in a good amount of time. And it's convenient to, you know, and, and comfortable while you're waiting for the services to come, so. That's right, yeah. Tenemos mucha gente que ya nos están eh, llegando en esta zona por carro. Este, y está bien, porque actualmente en esta zona estamos, estamos muy conscientes de que no tenemos muchas opciones o que es peligroso andar en otras opciones. Entonces, mientras que vayamos desarrollando esta zona, queremos también ofrecer más opciones para la gente, para que la gente pueda llegar seguramente aquí a esta zona. So we want to make sure that we have safe options, right? Not just options, yes. but that everyone is safe. So. Let's move to the third question. All right, here we go. All right, so how do you usually spend time in the East Riverside Pleasant Valley area? Do you live there? Do you work there? SWB audio capture, not it? registered. Aquí en esta pregunta queremos saber cómo es que usualmente pasan el tiempo aquí en esta zona de East Riverside con Pleasant Valley. Es porque trabajan, perdón, la primera opción es que viven allí o que trabajan allí o que van de compras o para cenar allí o u otra, otro motivo que les lleva allá. Yeah, I feel like there could be multiple answers for people, right? You could live there, work there, and it's where you shop and dine. Um, That's right, yeah. It could be all self-contained for you right there. And so, you know, we definitely have a, a lot of people, and that's good to see as well. There's a lot of people who live there who are joining this call tonight. And so we definitely want to hear from you to make sure this is reflective of the community uh, and your neighborhood. Yeah, it's about half of the participants that we have on here tonight are living in the area. So this is great. Oh, yeah. That is wonderful. And it's good to see people like to go there and have fun as well. That, they, you know, they're saying this is a place where they can go hang out um, and and enjoy themselves. That is a yeah. fun place for them to be, so. All right. We're at our even 50. Okay. So we're going to continue with the show, but this was only one part of our Mentimeter um, options that we're going to have. 
for you tonight. We're going to have uh, two two more coming up, and Giannis and I will will coach you through those other two. Um, so for now, I'm going to turn things back over to Peter Peter Mullen. Peter. Great. Um, thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Giannis. Um, so we're going to talk about the the station design now, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about some of the the design. I think objectives and key principles. Then we're going to look at, you know, the previous designs that we had and we shared with the community and got some feedback on um, back in the fall. Then we're going to be able to share, you know, an update on the design and how we I think if SWB audio capture not options. registered. Um, but starting with key principles, you know, I think there are there are five that are particularly relevant to this station that um, you know will kind of keep coming up again and again. Um, one is just ease of travel and accessibility. Um, you know, we want to make sure that obviously all of these transit facilities are as um, accessible to as many people, and particularly people with disabilities, as possible. Um, and so, how do we design the station to facilitate that? Um, number two and number three are related to one another. So, user experience and placemaking. So. How do we make the experience of accessing transit using the transit station something that's pleasurable and inviting and and actually a place that you might want to be for and not just a place that you would pass through and i think at this station we've got the ability to add amenities for the public that that really could help us achieve those goals um, the fourth is sustainability and resilience um, obviously sustainability is a core core principle and value of, of our program. And um, in this location in particular, I think we have the opportunity to achieve some really good water quality um, uh, and, and other environmental goals. So we're looking to figure out how we can maximize that opportunity. And the last is cost. And I talked about that earlier. Um, you know, how do we make sure that we always look at, at for cost effective solutions um, to achieve these goals? Next. Um, as I mentioned, you know, accessibility really is a first principle for us in all of our design decisions. Um, you know, we we need to design to the the, the least abled, uh, the least able-bodied user, um, because if we do that, and then we we can then we're designing for everybody, um, and so that's a, that's something that we bring to every design problem. Um, in the program, and it's particularly relevant here, given the slope. SWB um, audio um, capture makes not registered. In some cases, um, but I think we've been able to figure out how to solve. Uh, next, so specifically to show how some of these criteria actually apply to the site. Um, you know, right now the site I will say is is a little bit dominated by um, automobile traffic. Um, we have these two large Texas U-turns um, that I think um, make it both uh, feel like a very big kind of highway scaled place, not necessarily a pedestrian scaled place, um, and also increase the speed of the traffic, which I think has some safety concerns. So one of our goals is how do we make this intersection really pedestrian friendly and, and safer uh, as well. Um, next. Next slide, next slide, please. Is it just me? Oh, there we go, great. Um, okay, so one of the things is, you know, we've talked about how there are these different services that are intersecting, transit services that are intersecting at the site. You've got the Pleasant Valley Metro Rapid Line, you've got the Blue Line, you've got um, some local bus services. So how do we make the transfers between those different modes as, as seamless and frictionless as possible. And again, going back to this idea of Project Connect and our transit system as being a network where users are, are using both bus and rail um, to get to as many places around the city and to, to reach as many uh, destinations as possible. Um, using How do you make those transfers as seamless as possible? And we, I think, have a really good opportunity to do that here. Next. Um, this is, you know, again, we've got this large SWB median audio area. Captured, How do we not use registered. that large open space to achieve some of our environmental goals um, and also to provide some green space and open space um, to the neighborhood? Um, 
water quality in particular is something that you know is obviously crucial in our region um, and a huge priority for our community. So how do we take advantage of the site to achieve some of those goals? And I think you'll see the design to really work towards that next. And then we also, we have the ability to connect to Country Club Creek and the Country Club Creek Trail directly to our east, which runs, you can see the, the Pleasant Valley Medium kind of at the bottom of the slide. And you can see how the creek and the creek trail run all the way to the, to the river. Um, and so I think we have the ability by connecting to that um, open space and trail network um, to really kind of leverage this as a destination that is um, connected to places for cyclists and pedestrians, um, as well as you know, some of those waterways that, that um, have those amenities. So next. Okay, so let's go through um, some of the, the previous design options. We're gonna do this you know, quickly, just as a recap um, that we looked at last fall, right? And they've, they've evolved a little bit, but they're, you know, I think some of them, some, some of you who participated in that will, will be familiar with those. So let's, let's go, let's just review those next. So we, we were talking about, we had two preliminary design options that we had look, been looking at before. Um, this is option one, which we call the, the blue line underpass. And you can see here that the blue line basically is that blue, um, it, the platform for the blue line is that blue square shaped, rectangular shaped. And you can see how it, it kind of it passes underneath Pleasant Valley. So Pleasant Valley would continue. SWB audio capture, not the, registered. Um, and the blue line would come underneath it. Um, and uh, you know we do eliminate those Texas U-turns, so you know that U-turns would have to happen through a couple of left-hand turns. So I think there's some benefits here where we kind of you know we narrow down the roadways a little bit. But you can see all these these zigzaggy lines, right? Those all represent ramps um, that basically get you down to the platform because the the platform is located you know below Pleasant Valley. It's at a lower elevation. Um, and so, you know, it just means that there's a lot of vertical distance that you have to, to, to use to get to from the platform to the platform or from the platform um, to the adjacent spaces. Now, we do provide elevators in this scheme, um, but we never want to rely on elevators alone. Uh, we got a lot of feedback about elevators in the last round. Um, and so we have this duplicate accessible uh, path where you can use ramps to get down. But it, I will say it's, it's a little convoluted. And it's a little bit long, um, and that's something that you know we had concerns about, and we were you know trying to address. Go to the next. Um, here you can see uh, the the a cross section through Pleasant Valley, so you can get a sense of that slope. Um, it is about a you know a one in ten slope, or one in, in in twelve to one in ten slope. So it's it's actually steeper than an ADA accessible ramp, which. You know, I think causes some issues. We have to have some duplicate sidewalks to make that accessible, um, and you can see how the the light rail is passing underneath the roadway. Now, one of the challenges here is where to locate also the bus stops because you really don't want to part. You know, stop a bus on a slope that that's that steep. It's just not very uh, it's not very friendly, particularly for people in wheelchairs or people who have disabilities. So. Um, the bus stop was actually proposed to be on the SWB on the audio capture, left, not registered on the north side of Riverside, um, uh, to where it's a little bit flatter in part so that you know that's a it's a better sort of more accessible bus stop. But the downside is that it's farther away from the light rail, so connectivity between buses and rail here is not optimal. Um, okay, let's go to the next. So. Option two, right, was what we called the act grade transit plaza scheme. And, you know, the, the big feature, feature of this was a, was a roundabout. Um, basically, Pleasant Valley, instead of coming through the median, would be diverted into a roundabout around the site. Um, and what that allowed us to do is create a, a much bigger flat area uh, where we could have the light rail, but also we had some room to create um, these bus stops. These are these, you can see those blue squares um, on that pink sort of driveway on either side of Pleasant Valley. And those were dedicated bus lanes and dedicated bus stops. So 
to facilitate the connectivity between um, buses and rail in this case. Um, and the cars, the general purpose cars were diverted around the site. Um, you know, so this was good in terms of connectivity between different transportation modes. Um, we also had a lot of space for green space and water quality um, on the south side of the tracks. Um, and so I think there were some good landscape opportunities, but you know, the, it was tough on the traffic. You know, the diversion of the traffic was gonna slow that down. And then some of the interactions between pedestrians and the traffic given this roundabout were a little bit challenging. Right, and, and um, so I think causing, you know, we would need some additional signals to make that safe with them, which would then also slow the traffic down more. So again, great for pedestrian connectivity between bus and rail, not great necessarily for pedestrian um, activity, you know, connections to the- SWB audio capture, so not to, registered. So here you can see that same cross section. So we have this kind of flat, zone on the left, which is on the north side of the median, where we could create that bus rail interaction, um, and then this steep landscape slope to get to the top of, of the median. Um, next. So again, summarizing the considerations between options two, and these are, these are comments that we got from the community, which is, you know, real concerns about in option one, concerns about elevators, um, you know, and the perception that those are unsafe and they break, et cetera. Um, concerns about accessibility, given all these ramps and elevators, um, concerns about connections with travel modes, but on the other hand, you know, more efficient for traffic. Um, um, on option two, you know, better connectivity for transit users and better for open space, but concerns about impacts of traffic and concerns about sort of auto pedestrian conflicts potentially. So those are the two options we went away, we figured out how do we actually take the best of both of those options and try to put them together into a third option. So go to the next. Um, and again, all of the, the big challenge here is really about this slope. How do we actually create a flat area where we can create all those connections um, between bus, rail, pedestrians, et cetera, cyclists um, that are accessible, universally accessible um, on the site that have been free flow. Um, so uh, go to the next. So we've, we've done something pretty uh, tricky where we basically, we've reorganized where the, the eastbound lanes of Riverside are. So you can see those red areas show we've kind of to, we've, we've moved the East Valley's Riverside to the north. SWB audio okay. capture, so not registered. Um, and then created basically this larger flat zone that incorporates both the east and westbound lanes of Riverside and this new narrower median in between them, um, uh, where we can basically locate everything. And then we've shifted the slope of Riverside, of, sorry, Pleasant Valley, we've shifted that to the south. So if you can see on the right, bottom right, um, on the bottom, you can see that it's, it's cross section through the slope and you can see how, you know, it's a diagram, right? How we've kind of shifted that slope to the south to create this larger flat area um, on the median that incorporates all of the needs, both for traffic, for buses, for light rail, et cetera. Um, go to the next. Um, so one of the things that we have to do as part of this proposal is actually do a lot of regrading of Pleasant Valley to the south. We think we can achieve that and that's achievable, but that's part of that. That's one of the kind of, I think the big um, uh, projects that would be involved in making this work. Um, go to the next. Okay, so here's the, 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 the organization of the new scheme. So you can see the, the light rail is accurate. It's a split platform, like in previous option two. Um, and then you can see there's this kind of zone, which is partly green um, to the north of it. And then Pleasant Valley comes you know, through the site as it does currently and like it did in option one um, before. So that continues north and south through the site. But the key is we've got enough space, right, between the light rail tracks and the, that sort of the top, those westbound lanes of East Riverside to be able to create a bus stop, right? 
um, so we can create that direct connectivity between the buses and the light rail. Um, and that's all on this kind of flat. SWB audio flat capture, so that not registered. Stuff. We don't need ramps and we don't need elevators. All of that's basically the same elevation. Um, and so um, I think this is, and we'll go through, you know, how all this works and what we think we can do with the landscape, et cetera. Go to the next. So this is a similar cross section through that site. You can see this kind of wider flat zone that has the bus stop, it has the light rail, right? It has both lanes of East Riverside at that lower elevation. And then once you get to the right, to the south of the west, the eastbound lanes of Riverside, then that's the slope starts going up, you know, and going to the south. And that's the area that we would have to regrade to make that work. But we've got a bigger flat area at the bottom of the hill to work with. Um, next. So this is just a diagram showing, um, you know, where the bus stops are located, where the light rail station is located. Again, that's that white circle, the, the, the train icon. Um, you know, we've got low places for both the buses on Pleasant Valley running north-south. Those two would stop in the median directly adjacent to the light rail station. And then we've got um, the east and westbound local bus services um, on uh, essentially the far side of the Pleasant Valley intersection. So again, really good direct connection to both Metro Rapid and to the light rail. Um, and you can see these blue lines, it's all very logical. It's all, it's like a, it's like an intersection that people are familiar with and they know how to navigate. And so I think it's very intuitive. Um, we also have a, a, a pedestrian crosswalk on the east side of the platform so that people coming from the east would be able to connect to the light rail platform on the east end. They don't have to walk all the way down to Pleasant Valley to get on the platform. They can get there directly. Um, and there's also a connection to Country Club Creek directly from- SWB audio captured, not registered. So this is a diagram just showing how the bike lanes would work. We do have um, dedicated bike lanes, separated bike lanes um, through the site. The, there's the one location where we would have a kind of a shared use path um, adjacent to the transit station, but I think we've got enough width there to make that work. Um, that's that dotted line directly kind of just to the, to the right of Pleasant Valley. Um, so really, you know, very simple, very straightforward, great direct um, cycling connectivity through the site as well. Next. Um, so there's one other opportunity that comes with this because as I said, you know, we've moved the, those eastbound lanes of Riverside north, right? Um, as a result of that, we're creating these white zones are basically now excess pieces of, of the road, excess pieces of the right of way. Um, now we have to use some of that space to provide driveways, to provide access to, uh, to the properties, you know, just south of that right of way. Um, there may be some needs for uh, equipment and other sort of equipment facilities associated with the light rail system. Um, but I think that there are some opportunities for us to use that now excess right of way um, for other uses. And I think that's something that we'll want to come back to the community to talk about. Now, we are still looking into what the parameters around those that excess right of way is and you know, what restrictions, if any, may be on that. Um, and once we have that information, we'll come back and we'll have another conversation with the community about you know, priorities for those, those sites. But it is a, it's a potential benefit and opportunity associated with this design. Um, next. So, again, SWB audio capture, not later, registered. More on the design of the station in a second. So, um, there's more to come on this. Um, but just wanted just to show you how, you know, we think that the this third option really takes the kind of the best of both options one and two. So if you look at option one and two, you know, they kind of were good in some ways and not so good in other ways, and then the reverse, right? And so we've been able to sort of take the best of each one and then basically incorporate them into this coin, option three, which is kind of like a hybrid scheme between the two. Um, you know, it's both good for traffic. Traffic moves really seamlessly, quickly through the site. Um, it's great for pedestrian connectivity between 
um, between the different transfers, between different trans transit modes. Um, there's great opportunity for landscape and placemaking. Um, there is additional, you know, this regrading of Pleasant Valley to the south is an additional scope, but again, I think is something that um, we can manage and, and uh, is, is, is feasible. Um, go to the next. So um, going back to, you know, I talked about one of the criteria that we're always using is really is cost and how this scheme really fits into um, the cost compared to the other two schemes. Um, so if you look at that bottom, you know, the, the text at the top is the same that I talked about earlier in the, in the, in the presentation. Um, if you look at this table at the bottom, you know, basically um, these are all kind of relative costs to one another. So if you look at the middle column, option two, which was the roundabout scheme, that was probably the least expensive, right? Because we didn't have any elevators. We didn't have any like big ramps that you have to build retaining walls for. Um, it was all pretty flat and there was a lot of landscape, which is you know, a more cost effective way to deal with the slope. So that was that. Let's look at that as kind of like the baseline. And if you compare option one, SWB to that, option audio one, capture not registered million dollars compared to that one. Um, if we look at this new option three, um, it's probably somewhere between options one and two, right? So definitely less expensive than option one. Again, no elevators, no expensive ramps or structure like that. Um, you don't have to rebuild Pleasant Valley over the median, but you do have that regrading to the south. And so there's some additional costs associated with that. Um, so anyway, we think it's somewhere in the middle. So yeah, not the least expensive, but certainly not the most expensive and probably closer to the least expensive of the three options. Um, okay, let's go to the next. All right, great. So we're gonna, we're gonna, take, we're gonna go back to the Q&A and the Mentimeter. I'm gonna pass it back to Jocelyn and Giannis to take us through some, uh, get some feedback. All right, and I'll be back after that. Thanks. Here we are again. Hey, round two. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get you back over to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and enter the code 36466796. That's 36466796. We have and some we can get, pros get that are on here. They were quick to join this time. Hey, they were ready. They didn't know what to expect. Um, That's so right. I'm glad they're excited. Los volvemos a invitar a que nos, nos acompañen para compartir su opinión. Estamos en el sitio de web que se llama menti.com. Si nos están acompañando por nuestras redes sociales, les invitamos a que ve, eh, visiten www.menti.com y pongan el código 36466796. Y con ese código van a poder eh, expresar sus opiniones con las, las demás de las personas que nos están viendo en vivo. De nuevo, la dirección es www.menti.com o pueden usar simplemente eh, su teléfono para agregar el código QR aquí en la pantalla. All right, we're up to 35 people. There we go. Four more people and we can get this thing started. Yeah, I think that was our magic number last time was 40, and then we ended up having 50 people join us. So Yeah, so once again, remember, if you're in social media land, this is your chance to participate. You don't have to just be on Zoom to do this. Once again, you can go to menti.com and enter 36466796 uh, to participate. So, hey, we are at 40. So We hit 40. Let's jump to this first question. All right. Okay, the three option design provides improvements in these areas. We want to know if you strongly agree or uh, strongly disagree. Connections between bus and rail, access from neighborhoods, uh, safety for pedestrians and cyclists, or auto traffic pattern flow. And I think what people are seeing on their screen is a little sliding scale and you can you can alternate it between strongly disagree to strongly agree just using your finger to slide it up and down. Um, entonces lo que queremos saber aquí es en la opción 3 que nos explicó Peter es de en el dise el diseño de la opción 3 provee mejoramientos en las siguientes áreas y queremos saber si están 
con, de, eh, completamente desa, en desacuerdo, en desacuerdo, si están de acuerdo o si están completamente de acuerdo. Entonces van a tener eh, las siguientes áreas que son la conexión entre el, el camión y, la, y los trenes, eh, el acceso de los vecindarios, um, la seguridad para los, uh, para los peatones SWB y los turistas, audio captured, y luego también not registered. el mejoramiento en la circulación del tráfico. Entonces queremos saber si ustedes opinan que este, se está mejorando con el diseño que estamos proponiendo en la opción 3. Right. Yeah, looks like they feel very strongly about the connections between bus and rail. Um, That's great. And then yeah. uh, we, we saw, I saw in the Q&A that there was a highlight, a special shout out for taking the safety of pedestrians and cyclists into, into consideration. Um, it is a tricky intersection to navigate right now. It's a large intersection. It is. There's definitely some, some support for access from neighborhoods, but we might be able to see what else we can do. Uh, we want them to feel good about that. So we'll see uh, what can happen with that, but looks like it stopped moving. All right. So we can move on to... I think we're ready to, to go on. I think that was the only question we had for this round. Um, so we will um, introduce our, our newest team member uh, for his debut on our community design workshop for this area. This is Paulo Faria. Paulo? Hi, uh, thank you, Jocelyn. And uh, I have to disagree with Johannes. He said that he was talking about the sexy stuff, but I'm the one that's doing that. Uh, no question that that's the opportunity. So I think that uh, really uh, we are kind of a zoning the site and dif for different uses, right? I think that uh, um, the in the center of the site where we have the buses and we have the train and we have the pedestrians and cyclists, we have this opportunity to really put a heart in it and put this transit hub in the center of the site that can be visible from different uh, locations, easily assessed from both Riverside and kind of a pleasant valley and create this sense of place. Right? SWP audio uh, capture, not registered. Drop off areas for pickup, kiss and ride. And, and, uh, and uh, so you can bring your, your, your family member to the, to the hub to both eastbound and westbound. Uh, and the LRT canopy on the center. But I think the more important thing is there is a, a an opportunity to create something that is that really gives us a sense of place and a sense of pride in this in the landscape can we do something that we collect the water create some ponds and make the water kind of a flow through the site together with people so this idea of nature and uh, and, and and people connecting in a place that has, you know, uh, that pays attention to both. Um, so the, the next slide. Um, so this is, a, is, is not a design, but the, this is the opportunity. Uh, can we create this uh, uh, meandering pa passage that goes east-west and then make that kind of a float above a kind of a landscaped area and that collects the water from pond to pond and eventually connects you to the country uh, country club creek uh, so a series of passages uh, with this element in the center that can be your hub your heart of the site where you have an activated public plaza with transit uh, services, amenities, seating, shading, and, and something that really becomes a destination on its own and provides full accessibility through the buses and through the rail. So this again, this is not the final design. We have a long way to go. SWB audio capture, not this, registered. Um, this place that ties connectivity and nature uh, is, 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 is quite, uh, uh, interesting and a great opportunity. Next. So the idea of this ecological restoration zone uh, on the West where you capture water and you collect water 
this is not necessarily a destination on its own. It's more a passage connecting the drop-off zone and people coming from the West, kind of uh, really tying it with a series of other rain gardens on the, on the East uh, uh, in a way that is very uh, soft touch, uh, really integrating natural kind of habitats, natural plants, and a, a space of contemplation, but also passage. Uh, and it provides a very good kind of a better thermal comfort with the water and the nature and the trees. Um, next. So this passage that really connects you from the east to a series of boardwalks on elevated kind of a landscape allowing for the wetland to happen under this passageway. Uh, we have our bus canopies that connect uh, coming from the north to the south for the buses for the drop off area uh, and more trees and an activated and the initial of the activation of a plaza on the uh, east side of the site uh, here. Next. And that's the idea of this kind of uh, plaza that connects east and west parallel to the canopies of the light rail, uh, providing full visibility between the two. SWB uh, audio capture, lines, not make, registered. Uh, the place safer because you have kind of a visual porosity and visual transparency. Uh, everything happening on the same kind of at the same grade with full visibility uh, and uh, your amenities on our kind of a hub that I like to call the heart of the site. Next. And this idea of a canopy that is performatic in the sense that provides shading, provides uh, protection from the environment. Uh, it can connect north and south of the site. So you have connect connectivity from the drop, uh, drop off uh, zone on, 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 on the south here on, on Riverside. And then you have a protected way to, to cross the tracks and go to the hub where you do the ticketing and you have your amenities. You might have retails, food trucks, and an activated urban plaza. Next. This idea of this canopy floating above the site, providing shading and also providing intuitive wayfinding. I think we want to be able to, from all, all quadrants here, to be able to see where you're going. Uh, we need to kind of a, foster intuitive wayfinding as much as possible and obviously kind of a thermal protection solar protection from the uh, from the environment so people can wait for the trains and can kind of uh, uh, um, have their taco or have their 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 food and 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 meet somebody to go uh, somewhere uh, a real destination on its own uh, next uh, then there is our connection to uh, uh, the country uh, 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 creek, uh, the country club creek. Uh, we have to do some modeling of that. Obviously, we have to SWB audio capture kind of not registered and kind of uh, uh, and resiliency aspects of it. We have currently two options. This option that tries to kind of tries to completely. Uh, go above the country creek, connecting to the east bank of the creek. Uh, and the next one, that is a more tortuous path, that is more like a, proce like a procession to achieve the, 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 the east side. Uh, and uh, both, both options have their pros and cons, and we have to evaluate with a bit more of modeling. Uh, and uh, uh, understanding uh, better and working with watershed on which one of those makes more sense from a, a resiliency and sustainability perspective. Uh, next. And that's a rendered view of this uh, opportunity, uh, this highly landscape sustainable place that is also the connection between rail buses and cars and cyclists and pedestrians with your kind of with your hub in the center 
and your east-west connections uh, by the rail and north-south by the dedicated by bus, uh, bus, bus service. Next, the view from the east looking, looking west, uh, other way around, west looking east, you can see the canopy of our hub, uh, the opportunity of going in all directions and full visibility of uh, all quadrants with your destination plaza uh, ahead of you. Next. Our hub uh, with our canopy uh, that protects- SWB audio weather, capture, not registered. Uh, uh, shading uh, on top of the, on the tracks, an activated urban plaza with uh, bike share connectivity uh, information. Uh, I think it's anticipated that this station will be manned. So it will be kind of uh, uh, always um, kind of supervision uh, ticketing machines and whatever is necessary for the kind of oper radio operations, information products that just supplement the the the, the architecture and don't uh, and you don't rely on signage only to uh, know your way around the site. Next. I think this is also Paolo. Just to stay on this one for a second, Can you go back one. I think this is an area where really we're going to want to hear a lot from you from the community mm -hmm. about. You know what kinds of activities could we put in this in this area again this is not designed by any means yet mm -hmm. um, and we want to hear like what are the kinds of things you'd want to do here or see here see happen here um, to really make this an active vibrant place um, that also connects to to transit absolutely and uh, uh, we are also proposing that uh, uh, part of the thematic drivers for the site is this idea of sustainability. So uh, solar panels uh, that can be at the top of this canopy can help with uh, uh, supplement kind of the connections to, to, to power. So I think that that's also one of the, 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 the drivers here is not just sustainability of the site, but it's also sustainability of the buildings and the, 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 the built environment in general. Next. This is a view from the other side with, with the canopy uh, on, on in ahead of ahead of you. Uh, so we are looking east to the west. SWB uh, audio capture, not web, registered. And this series of ponds and elevated boardwalk connecting you to the hub uh, in, in front there. Next. Here you can see from above the solar panels and a more porous canopy crossing the tracks and the canopies that are serving the light rail uh, uh, by themselves parallel to uh, the, the boardwalk structure uh, on the right. Yeah, so just to reiterate, right, we had some fun in trying to explore what the opportunity is here, but this is not designed yet. Right? Absolutely it's not. Yes. Just a suggestion, I think, of, and there's a whole process that we'll get into with you all, with the community to, to actually develop the design. But I think it was, it gave us a chance to really, again, identify and explore what the possibilities are here um, as a way of kind of prompting that conversation. That's right, Peter. I think there are some elements here, right? The ground plane, the landscape, the connectivity of the, of the multiple modes and the rovering element that can be a signifier of the place from distance. That's all we have and everything else is, uh, uh, just a, a, a reef in those teams. Next. And that's it. I'm, uh, I'm excited to hear from you. You're right, Paolo. That was really sexy. And it's, it's really exciting because it does incorporate the buses and all of the modes of transportation in that area. So um if this is just a sample of those renderings i can't wait to see um how much better it's going to be with community feedback and yeah. um and that that's just what we're here to do is to offer folks an opportunity to interact with us sw um, audio capture not registered 
um, and, and how we can make this a better place for all of us. Yeah, that's right. So it's y'all favorite time again. And we see people are already going there. Minty.com, uh, M-E-N-T-I.com and enter the code 36466796 uh, to be able to participate in it. Once again, social media, this is your chance to have that interaction with us. Gracias a, a, para todos los que nos están acompañando. Esperemos que estén muy emocionados sobre las imágenes que acaban de ver. Eh, lo único que nos va a hacer mejor es que ustedes pongan sus opiniones, su, contribu su contribución a este proceso es lo, lo que va a mejorar a esta zona para todos los que lo van a usar. Si les encanta algo, si no les gusta algo, pónganlo en el chat, pónganlo en, en, en la sección que dice Q&A o en los comentarios de las redes sociales que tenemos. Ahora les vamos a invitar una vez más a www.menti.com y ahí es donde van a poner el código 3646-6796 y es donde van a poder participar con nosotros en esta noche para aportar sus comentarios en vivo. Si tienen su celular listo, van a poder pon, uh, eh, nomás apuntar sus cámaras para usar el código QR o visítenos en menti.com 3646-6796. 6796. Yeah, we're up to 33. We need seven more uh, of yeah, y'all. We can two. do it. We've done it the last two times. Don't quit on us yet. We're almost done. So, yeah, five more and we can get this party started. You know, you want to, you had fun last time in the time before. So, let's keep having fun. Uh, you heard Paolo say he had the sexy part to talk about. So, I'm sure you want to give your opinion on that part. <laughs> Even though we know Metro Rapid is SW the, the audio part capture of all not registered. Um, there we go. <laughs> it's a competition. Yes. Where are we? We we still need four more. Uh and four we more. We're gonna be asking about the amenities, right? So now's your chance. If you if you really liked something and you want us to for sure keep it or ditch it, um, that's yeah. the question we're gonna be asking next. What's the most important kind of things for you? So this is a chance if you wanted to see something more of or definitely want to see it here's your opportunity to say yes yes make sure that is there or like yeah i can you know live without maybe something so that's right uh, it's a nice to have not a need to have right exactly All hey, right. we hit we it 40. <laughs> let's go okay and this is another ranking uh, so you should be able to slide uh, the little slider what amenities for the Riverside Station area are the most important to you? I mean, you're ranking them from least important to most important. Uh, this is not necessarily putting something out against, against each other. This is just letting us know what's the most important uh, for you. Yeah, so we have, uh, first we have, we have seating, shade. Oh, yeah. Go ahead if you want to. Yeah, landscaping, I'm sorry. Uh, lighting, art and interactive displays water fountains, features, uh, bike storage, or other. Aquí es donde queremos saber que cuáles son los servicios o las comodidades que se deberían considerar eh, con, con mayor importancia y queremos saber su opinión. Entonces, del, de lo que, lo que no es lo importante para ustedes a lo que es lo más importante. Van a usar sus dedos para poder mover esa, eh, esos puntitos para decir que no es tan importante, hay que es importante. Tenemos los asientos, esa es la primera opción, la sombra, el paisajismo, la iluminación, los servicios de comestibles, también um, arte interactivo, fuentes de agua, el almacenamiento de las bicicletas u otros servicios. Y perdón, uh, no, agregué uno que no está allí, que son los servicios de comestibles. Antes estaba y ahora no está. I'm being told if, if anybody wants to tell us more about other, uh, they could use the chat. The chat is open. Uh, for them to type in uh, what is that other. Si quieren aportar sus comentarios también en la opción, en la última opción que se dice otras opciones, este, si quieren poner en los comentarios en nuestras redes sociales o en el chat, eh, queremos saber cuál, qué es lo más importante para ustedes. Yeah, uh, on a day like today, I, I am not surprised that shade is number one. I, I would 
and it looks like just seeing with a 4.9, almost everybody is saying shade. I'm wondering who's that one person who didn't rank it that high, but yeah, shade I is mean, it's 45 p.m. and it's still 95 degrees out. We get that one, yes. Someone just we, put in the chat coffee, yep, coffee. <laughs> Connections to uh, the Country Club Creek Trail and Clothes Playground. Uh, we have that as well. So somebody wants to see something for the kids. Another person agreed about a connection to the Country Club Creek Trail. A good question about rest public restrooms. So, I mean, that could be in the other category too. And I think, you know, something that will definitely be on our list to consider for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, public restroom is another. People want to make sure they can be seen for their Instagram photos and whatever else. So they want to have lighting, make sure they can take some good pictures and beautiful landscaping for their beautiful pictures. So, Peter, we're going to need some lighting and some landscaping for them to take their pictures in, in front of. This right, be a on. Destination. right on. Yeah. And, you know, we also got a comment in the chat about food. And, I mean, it's you know like as in parks you know it's like one of the number one activity that people want to do is eat and it draws people so yeah i think that's a great suggestion we should have put it on the list so um you know to me that's just a that's a how not an if right i see opportunities for small businesses and wi-fi as well and others it's a great suggestion uh we have a person who thinks shading and landscaping go hand in hand with some shady trees oh yeah, I think one of the images we we're trying to show the possibility of having seating areas that are under the shade, you know, and that's so there's Wi Fi, you know, I mean, all sorts of ways that people could use that. Yeah, uh, this person, Jeremiah, is saying a major transfer station, making it comfortable is important. It, it wants seating, water, restrooms, lighting to keep it feeling safe, and independent vendors will make this the, des the destination uh, we all want it to be. That's great. Okay. That's exactly the kind of feedback we're looking for to improve this. We got, we got, a, we got a suggestion in the QA, maybe a small stage for music. Hey. All right. Now we're talking. There, that's very awesome. I know the chat is closing. Uh, and it looks like the slides have stopped sliding. That's a so. whole other thing. It's we are busking at our transit stations, right? I mean, lots of opportunities there. Yeah. We, we've been doing metro music um, at different stations, so we might as well have something there where our metro music can perform at these okay. stations. I'm sure Jesse would love that. So, so keep right. the excitement coming. Keep your feedback coming. Uh, we're really excited that you tuned in with us tonight um, to see. Um, again, the conceptual renderings that we have. This has not been designed, and we are looking for community feedback on it. Um, and of course, we have other ways for you to get involved um, coming up uh, Thursday, May 26th. We're going to be going very near here on the blue line. We're going to be discussing South Shore um, and that uh, meeting will be discussing the stations at Waterfront, Travis Heights and Lake Shore. So again, very close to the Riverside stop. Um, then we're going to be discussing vehicles and systems. So if you want a sneak peek of some of the items that we're considering that would be important to have of in our vehicles and, and the related systems that we need. Join that meeting on June 1st. Uh, then we have a combined maintenance facility update um, for the maintenance facility that we need in order to service all of these um, electric trains. Uh, that's on June 8th. Uh, we'll go to the orange line and we'll talk about the drag on um, June 14th. And then um, another exciting uh, meeting, not that the drag wasn't exciting, but something that's new to Austin is to have an overview of what a subway through downtown Austin could look like and those related stations. Um, and so we invite you to, to mark your calendars for June 22nd for that meeting. Mark your calendars for all of these meetings. Um, sign up to stay involved, to get involved in a working group at projectconnect.com slash get involved. Um, and you can always email us that feedback at capmetro.org for any kind of uh, feedback that you may have on tonight's meeting or, or anything that you see in our library archives um, online. Um, so with that, I think we'd like to thank hey, you Jocelyn, again for your participation. Peter, yes? We're, we're a little ahead of schedule, it looks oh, like. We are. 
Do we want to do I want to take some some questions from the audience? Right? Yeah, we might do have a little, time for do a little talk four. show. I mean, I'm seeing some some uh, you know some good questions in the Q and A, and maybe um, you know maybe we can take some live, or we can if people want to raise their hands. I don't know how do you want to how do you want to do that? I think that we can do that. I think that what we'll do is make it so that people can raise their hand. And if you raise your hand, we'll take questions in the order that they come in. And it looks, look at that immediately. Uh, you know, Gavino, Brian, Melissa, so many to choose from. Um, so I'm gonna get out of the way and, and let y'all decide who goes first. I'll make sure that people's mics are open. Thank you, Lonnie. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and thank you to everyone. I should say thank you to everyone who, who has asked questions already in the Q&A. Um, you can see those questions and answers that our team has been scrambling. Um, Mr. Gavino Fernandez. Gavino, so glad you could join us tonight. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll open up Gavino's mic for his question. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, my question in regards to elevation is that I know like on Riverside, side, you're gonna have a big old, I mean, a real large sidewalk, if you will, to transition from one location to the other. And I know that that is a very, Hill, if you will, and that's why I was concerned. Like, if I'm on a wheelchair, what type of elevation is that? You know, path walk that's going to transition uh, people, you know, walking. Is it going to be a real steep elevation where my wheelchair cannot, you know, travel on that? Yeah, that's a great, it's a great question, Kibino. I mean, I think that the um, certainly at the station itself you know part of the, the whole driver of this is to to make it really almost low slope no slope at all um and then as part so really flat totally accessible really easy um for people with disabilities uh, and everybody um i think then you know the there is this regrading of pleasant valley to the south where we're kind of shifting the slope down a little bit part of that is to try to make that slope more easily accessible, if anything, than it is today, right? Certainly not less. So, you know, I think we got to do a little more study about how far we have to grade that back um, to be able to achieve that. But certainly that is the goal is to make, again, the access from the south easier than it is today so that even, you know, both sort of just to make, make access to the site as easy as possible. Great. Uh, looks like um, Melissa. Robledo, you are next. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Thank you guys so much. That was amazing. Y'all are terrific. And I love a little competition. Um, my question is, one, are you considering yet another design? I personally am super excited about this design and the evolution. And then my second question is, as this is going along, are you considering the staging of this station, like in that white area? or I guess in future conversations of talking about um, where that would be. That's all, thank yeah. you. No, Melissa, great questions as always. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, I think so, it, and actually the questions are related because it kind of relates to process and time, right? So first of all, glad you like the new design. First of all, so that's great. Um, you know, I think part of our goal right now as part of this preliminary engineering is to make sure we've got all the pieces in the right place like the light rails in the right place the stations in the right place the roadways are in the right place um, we know what's involved to get all those pieces in the right place um, i think in terms of the development of the specifics of what the place looks like what does the canopy look like how big is the canopy what are the uses on the hub you know what are those ponds and the boardwalk what look like i mean all those details you know, that will come through a design process that will follow right after we get through this preliminary engineering phase. So um, I think we're trying to get good feedback of do we have all the pieces in the right place so that then when we go to the next level of design, we got good, we, we feel good about that. Um, you know, in terms of construction staging, again, like I would say that's a big TBD, right? We know that we've got to find places for staging. Um, you know, we haven't really gotten into that yet. I think once we again figure out get get everything sort of settled into the right place and we feel like the community agrees that everything's in, in the, the best place 
then we'll figure out, you know, what do we need for staging to be able to actually build it? And that's like a whole other conversation. We're, we're a little ways away from, from that. So yes, it's going to happen, but we're not there yet. All right. Are there any other questions that somebody may want to ask from the crowd? There's some from the Q and A um, sheet we can pull as well, but I want to give you a chance to raise your hand and ask a question live if you have it. All right. Uh, looks like Philip. Should be able to unmute yourself. Um, what stage or when does the uh the other design element portion come i know you said that's at a later time is that six months a year two years like yeah so we um you know uh there we actually have a an open solicitation out on the street right now um, for architectural and urban design services to kind of again to develop the the station design system and prototype designs and reference design guidelines, et cetera. So um, I would expect that process of the development of the design would start in the fall. That's probably, you know, um, some of that process will involve a lot of, you know, research and visioning about what the language, our design language for the system wants to be, right? Think about, you know, it should be of this place, should be of Austin. Um, and so we got to, you know, have a design team, get a design team on board to actually do that research and visioning work. So, you know, I think fall into 2023 is when the de design um, of this place would get would get further developed. And there will be lots of community engagement, obviously, involved with all of that, all of that work. And because we want this to fit the fabric of the community, I mean, that's what community feedback, regardless of what percentage we are at the design, we're, we're yeah. always listening. And, and any all this input that we get now gets fed into that future process, right? It's, it's all, you know, we, we have this, all this information, here's what the community told us, you know, here's, we go work with us, right? When we hand it off to to our, our next design team. Yeah, and, and looking at the clock, I think that might've been the last question. We're up at seven o'clock. So uh, we definitely want to thank everybody who came out and participated tonight. We know you could have, been doing anything else for these past hour and a half or so, but you chose to hang out with us and we really appreciate that. And uh, with that, you know, go and have fun, watch a game. I'm sure there's some playoff game, hockey, basketball. I mean, if you want to spend time with your family, if that's your thing too, I guess, but you know, go have some fun. Thanks, Thanks for your time, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you.